I am Anil Kumar. Welcome to my series on calculus. We'll try to understand what are indeterminate forms. The idea is to work on limits and apply L'Hopital's rule to find limits for most of the functions. So for that, we should be very clear in our mind what is a determinate and what is indeterminate. Right? So we'll begin with very basic questions. Question number one here is, which of the following are determinate forms? Question number two, which of the following are indeterminate forms? Right. So you can now pause the video, answer this question, and then we'll look into question number three, four. So the very first one here says, which of the following are determinate forms? When we say determinate, that means we can find its value. Okay, so 1 over infinity. Now, it you may say 1 to the power of anything is 1, but 1 to the power of infinity, are you sure it will be 1? That is kind of a question for you, right? That's why we categorize this into indeterminate forms. Infinity to the power of 1, 0 to the power of 0, or infinity to the power of 0. We know that anything to the power of 0 should be 1. But if it is infinitely large, will it be 1? We are not sure about it. So in these examples, the only value which we are sure about is b. Infinitely large value to the power of 1 will definitely be equal to infinity. This we are 100% sure. So that is a determinate form. It is not indeterminate. Right. Okay. So now let's look into question number two and then try to answer the question. It is, which of the following are indeterminate forms? Right. So that means we are not sure about the value. Right. So that is what we are trying to figure out. E to the power of minus infinity. Now e to the power of minus infinity, I think we are sure about it since uh, the exponential graph actually keeps on increasing and when you are approaching minus infinity it is approaching zero right so this is approaching zero we know that so that's okay we know about it ln zero well if i have to sketch ln zero it is going to be kind of like this and we know that this is going to approach negative infinity so we know about it but if you have two quantities which are very large and if we subtract one from the other, we are not very sure as to what we are going to get, right? So that is indeterminate. Do you agree with me? So that is how we categorize. And e to the power of zero is infinitely large, right? So we are sure about this also. So from this example, you understand that there are quantities which we are not sure of just as 1 to the power of infinity, 0 to the power of 0, infinity to the power of 0, infinity minus infinity. There are many more. For example, 0 over 0, right? We are never sure of infinity over infinity and so on, right? So specifically, we have seven of these. So we'll look into that right at the end when we'll discuss the summary of determinate and indeterminate forms. Correct? Now we have two other questions for you. You need to justify why 0 times infinity is an indeterminate. Right? You need to justify this and you need to justify that 1 to the power of infinity is not equal to 1. So these are also very important questions to look into. So now I like you to pause the video and uh, answer these questions and then look into my suggestions right we said that one to the power of infinity is indeterminate but why is it so that's a question right so let's see how to answer this question and once we understand all this then we'll summarize all our learnings now in case you have any doubts or you want to understand something you can always send me an email on the given address here okay so let's take up question number three now so here are two very important questions. Question number three, 
justify that 0 times infinity is an indeterminate and question number 4 is justify that uh, justify that 1 to the power of infinity is not equal to 1 right so these are the two questions for you let's see how to prove it so justify that 0 times infinity is an indeterminate that means we are not sure about this value and then we have to also justify that 1 to the power of infinity is also indeterminate and I'm writing it in a different form that it is not equal to 1, correct? So what is it equal to? So we don't know really what is it equal to, right? So let's try to understand how to prove this, okay? Now, when I say 0 times infinity, it means what? It means very, very small amount, right, or a number times very very large number that's what it means basically correct so but you could say that anything times zero equals to zero right? we could say anything times zero is zero so let's consider for a moment let it be true we say let it be true so one way to prove something is to assume that it is not correct and or something and then we'll prove that is wrong, correct? That's the whole idea. So from contradiction, we'll try to prove. So we say that anything times zero is zero. So we're saying, okay, that really implies that zero times infinity should be equal to zero. That's what it means. But well, what is zero? You could write 0 as 1 over infinity, right? 1 divided by infinitely large thing times infinity should be 0. Right? So that means this, right? But do you think it is correct? Infinity over infinity equals to 0 is incorrect. Why? Because if you divide the same thing by same thing, what do you expect? We expect 1, correct? Not 0, for sure. So because of contradiction, because this is not equal to 0, we say that is not defined, right? So, so our way of saying is that since this is not true, so that means that this is not true. Right, so that is how we kind of proved it that zero times infinity you cannot say for sure is zero. We are not sure about it, and therefore this is an indeterminate. Is that clear? Perfect. So that's how we actually prove it. Now we have uh, another condition here, and we want to now prove that one to the power of infinity is not equal to one. So how do you prove this one? Well, what we can do here is that we say let it be, right? So let 1 to the power of infinity equal to 1. In that case, if I take log both sides, then ln of 1 to the power of infinity will be equal to ln of 1, correct? Now, using logarithmic rules, it becomes infinity times ln 1 is equal to ln 1. Well, ln 1 is 0, ln 1 is 0, we are saying infinity times 0 is equal to 0. Well, that cannot be true, right? That cannot be true. Infinitely large quantity times 0 will be 0. We know, we know that infinity times 0 is indeterminate. Therefore, 1 to the power of infinity is also indeterminate. So, so likewise, we can prove that this is indeterminate, right? So similarly, we could actually also prove that uh, infinity minus infinity is indeterminate. Okay, so let that be an exercise for you. So I'll write this as your question number five. Is it okay? So for you, you need to prove that uh, 
infinity minus infinity is indeterminate, right? So the idea is right from here, take log both sides and prove it out. Okay, so I think that helps you to understand what quantities are we sure about and what quantities we are not sure about, correct? So it's a good time to classify the whole list. So that once for all, we have it in, you know, and so we understand when to use L'Hopital's rule, when not to use. Is that okay? So we are actually leading to limits. Next topic, using L'Hopital's rule. So that is next. So before that, we need to understand this, correct? So let's make our list of things which we are sure about. and indeterminate forms. Okay. So, so for example, if I have something which I am, let's say, dividing by, so this will uh, denote a number. This is a number for me, right? Okay. So any number divided by infinity, we know it is zero. So we are sure about it. Is that okay? And if I write zero on the top, right, so, so uh, divided by a number, let's say, let's say a number, we know that is zero. So that is determinant. Perfect. But if I have uh, something divided by zero, then that could be infinitely large. Depending on the sign of the numerator, we could get positive or negative infinity. Is that clear? Correct? So that, now, there are other forms, for example, if I have infinity to the power of 1, we know that is infinity. And if I have a form which is uh, 0 over infinity, in that case, this is 0. So we are sure about it. You are getting my point, right? So these things we are very sure about. We are also sure about what is e to the power of negative infinity. We know it is zero, right? So if I write negative infinity, it is zero. Now let me just continue with e to the power of infinity. We know it is very large value. Is that clear to you? Correct? Similarly, as far as logarithms are concerned, we'll be coming across logarithms many times in our examples. So, so logarithms for infinitely large and zero values are what? Well, if it is infinitely large, it is infinitely large. And when it is zero, it is approaching negative infinity, correct? So look into the graphs of logarithms and exponential functions for these two answers. However, we are very sure about these values, right? So we are very sure about these values. We know about them. So these are not indeterminates. They are all determinants, right? We know these values. Now, which ones we don't know? So if you get something like 0 over 0, we don't know about, and which could also be written as infinitely large over infinitely large. There could be plus and minus sign. That doesn't matter. However, these are definitely the cases which are indeterminate forms. Correct? So that is one. Second, we have a form which is 0 times infinity, which we just proved that this is something which you are not sure about, correct? Or which I left as an exercise for you. The indeterminate forms are infinity to infinity, so these two. And then we have the forms which are 1 over infinity, 0 over 0, and infinity over 0. So these are the indeterminate forms. Now, when we will be solving questions based on limits, especially for the indeterminate forms, we'll categorize them into different categories. We'll say this is type A for us. They will have one strategy to solve. Then we call them as type B. This will have second strategy and then we'll call them as type C. We'll have the third type of strategy to solve the questions related to limits uh, when we have this kind of indeterminate forms, correct? So I hope with this, you get a lot of information 
rather a good introduction on what are determinates and what are indeterminate forms. As far as finding limits are concerned, if you have a determinate forms, then you can just plug in the value and get the answer. If it is indeterminate form, we use different kinds of strategies, which we'll understand in the next video. Okay, I hope that makes sense. Feel free to write your comment, share your views, and if you like and subscribe to my videos, that'll be great. Thanks for watching and all the best.